We rejoin you from Creighton Durham Hall High School where we are televising high school girls basketball. Uh, St. Paul non-conference rivalry between St. Paul Central and Creighton Durham Hall. The leading scores from the first half, Molly Geske with 14 points, Carolee Neenhart had nine points, and Kendra Harris had five points. For Central, the scoring was pretty balanced. Tiara Buford leads the way with 11 points. Deara Taylor comes in at eight points so far. And Megan Jones, or Georgie Jones and Megan Howard are tied with seven points apiece. So, what do you expect to see in the second half? Well, I expect to see, I hope to see the adjustments made by Creighton. And one of them, they address the rebounding. I hope to see the adjustments by Central by find if they could find that post play a little bit more. They need more scoring from Georgie Jones. All that's going to do is open it up more for uh, Buford to get that outside shot. Uh, speaking from uh, Buford, there might be a theory as to how she developed such a sweet stroke, as we like to call it. Her mother, Tracy, played uh, high school basketball herself for Highland Park and then at Grandview College in Iowa. In fact, she played at Highland Park from in the mid-80s when she was known as Tracy Buckman. She scored 387 points in her career, averaging 10.2 points a game, and set and tallied a career-high 38 points against Harding in 1987. And in two of her four years, Highland Park went to the state tournaments, going into the final in 1986. She must have played with Suggs. Suggs that year was one of the leading shot blockers in the state. I remember that team, good team. It runs in the family. Meanwhile, Taylor for three. Air ball. And Creighton wise to let it go. The late Betty Richards was the coach for that team. Betty always had some good Highland teams. Indeed, in fact, uh, in both in both 85 and in 86, in the 85 and 86 seasons when Highland played, they set a school record for most career victories with 22. That was a good team. Great job uh, by, great defensive play by uh, the Anaconda. She just did a good job of just getting right there. Geske thought about a three, but will reset the play. Hendricks overthrows Kendra Harris and a wasted opportunity for Creighton Durham Hall. We haven't seen too much of that so far. No, we have not. Creighton, of course, having not played in over a week, their last game was a loss to Hopkins in the Pat Patterson Thanksgiving tournament. Of course, the game that followed was Central and Centennial. Central is really doing a good job of executing their half-court offense. There she is again. Another rebound. Megan Howard Hello. gets the jump shot from the free throw line. That's the kind of offense that kills you. Meanwhile, Jeske catches Central falling asleep, but she can't make them pay for it. And De'Ara Taylor with the rebound. But she loses the ball, Kenny picks it up. And we have a scramble, fight for the ball. Little scrum on the floor. No one from Central no, uh, told Taylor that there's someone behind him. And Kiana Johnson will get called for her second personal foul. Again, Creighton wearing purple, Central wearing white. Harris out to Hendricks. And nice extra, extra pass. The extra pass makes the basket. Hendricks finally gets on the scoring column. It's 39-32. Power, go inside. No good, Harris with the rebound. Here comes Dean Hart, she has a one on two. 
Kenny thought about a three, goes for a two. That doesn't fall. Johnson with the rebound. Johnson a much calmer in this game. And she finds Georgie Jones open. She can't convert. Harris with the rebound. And Johnson with the steal. See, that's the difference. A Creighton Durham Hall doesn't have that point guard yet to come back and get that ball from Harris. Buford was open in the corner, but will look to go inside. Now Taylor, traveling violation. So after all that, Creighton Durham Hall will once again try to move the ball up court. Looking at this team, that Central Centennial game may have been a wake-up call for the defending state champions. Johnson with the steal. De'Aaron Taylor gets the foul on the basket. She breaks double digits in scoring with 10. And could make it 11 on this free throw. You know, I think we're just seeing the tip of the iceberg with Taylor. She is going to be one fine ball player. Three-point play successful. Central back up by 10. She seems to get better and better every time I see her. And a foul is called. Dean Hart draws it. Kiana Johnson will get tagged with her third personal foul. And Siona West now steps in. Well, I'm, I'm impressed with Dean Hart's ball handling. You know, last year, you know, you had the point guard playing, and she didn't handle the ball much. But now she's handling the ball well. She's not getting knocked off the ball when she has it. And she's just doing a good job of, of keeping her dribbling and uh, moving, uh, moving the ball down the floor. Taylor with the steal. Buford with the last basket. She has 13 points. And Creighton. All of a sudden, they're faced with their largest deficit of the game. And a five-second call. That's the first five-second violation we've seen tonight. No comment. And Central could increase their lead. They have... They have their largest lead of the game so far. Taylor nearly lost the ball, but she recovers. Georgie Jones out to Megan Howard. She'll get another two free throw shots. See how Megan Howard just jumped into Harris like that to draw the foul? The foul is on Kendra Harris, her second personal. Smart move by Megan. And she has been sinking her free throws. And she now breaks double digits with 10. We can't make the second. Fight for the rebound. Geske comes up with it. And a, another foul is called on St. Paul's Central. It's on Megan Howard. That is her first of the game. Central is up by their largest lead, though, at 13. Taylor with the steal, and she has two on one, finds Buford again. And another kiss off the glass. Amy Bellis calls timeout, Kiara Buford with 15 points. Coach Taylor was hoping he'd get a foul out of that one. No foul, but they did get the basket. Central up by 15. But in this very game a year ago, it was about this time where Creighton Durham Hall, they were down by 25. Everyone thought it was over, and they clawed back, made Central sit, pay attention. Absolutely. So don't count Creighton Durham Hall out just yet. But. Talking about Buford and how uh, she'll be wearing the maroon and gold next year, Central has had quite a connection with the University of Minnesota. They've sent a couple of their other graduates there. 
of course, the moment one that's most often talked about, Linda Roberts, who is in the top five all-time scoring with 1,856 points. She played from 1977 through 1981. And of course, you have Ashley Ellis Milan, who's there now. In her athletic freshman season, she put up 300 points and led the team in rebounding. And her points per game and rebounds per game have improved in the early going of this season. And also a cousin to Linda Roberts. The six degrees works in so many ways, ladies and gentlemen. Oh yeah. In the meantime though, I think Buford's a little more worried about how her team will finish. Pass was broken up, Creighton will keep possession. Kenny to Harris. Harris was open, but she can't handle the pass, and Brittany Dorsey with the steal. Nice play by Creedon. Buford looking for Jones. Hendricks breaks it up, but Central will keep the ball. Pick the picker and come around it, and she was open and missed the pass coming in. She was wide open. Jones overthrown, but Taylor was there to recover. Now she'll take it herself, but the ball gets poked. Hendricks with the steal, and Mary Kenny is open, but Siona West comes from behind to take the ball away. And Dorsey fires. Swish. Central increases their lead to 17. Dorsey with four. Creighton doesn't need to get in a running match with Central. Jeske. Not blinding speed, but her drive to the basket does get a foul. It will, it will be on Georgie Jones, her second personal. And the foul was before the shot, so Creighton will inbound the ball. I like what Coach Taylor is doing with Taylor out on the field, on the floor, forcing her to play a little point guard. You know, basically, that's what she's going to play in college. Brittany Dorsey tripped up Kenny, and she will get called for her third personal foul. And Central, all of a sudden, with only one foul left to give. And Willie Taylor sends Megan Howard back in. Creighton looking to strike from outside. And they're in no hurry. They know they have a lot of time left. Kenny for three. No. Cordy with the rebound. But Kiara Buford with the steal. And here comes the transition game. Buford. Goes inside to Jones. Steps back. Can't get the basket. Foul. Jones didn't need to uh, fade on that. She needed to turn around and put it right back up. The foul is on Megan Howard, her second personal. Lisa Springer steps in the game. Replacing Mary Kenny. Escapes a double team Springer with the jumper. And she will get a trip to the free throw line. Foul is on Georgie Jones, her third personal, and now you have to start being a little more careful. Springer makes her first. Springer coming in tonight was three for five from the charity strike. 
Only gets one. Pete and Dur Durham Hall keeps hanging around here. They're not really out of it yet. Taylor for three, for two. She was on the line, it's a two-pointer. Nonetheless, Central is up by their largest lead of the game at 18. Deara Taylor with 13 points now. Geske spins around, but wanted to go to Cordy. But the ball hit the line. Central will take possession. The right strategy there to trick Central into thinking she was going to take a shot. Cordy just wasn't ready. Buford goes to Jones, and Jones is too strong. Thierra Taylor with the rebound. That gives her 15. Central's down, uh, Creedon's down by 20. They, they need to answer right now. They need to answer. Palming. And Central up by 20. They are tearing Creighton Durham Hall apart. Picking up where they left off in their last matchup. Kiana Johnson now back in the game. Central killing a little clock. They know the clock is their friend right now. Taylor will go for a three. No good. Megan Howard fought for the rebound, but she stepped on the line. Coach Taylor wasn't happy with that shot. And a timeout is called. 10.26 to go. Sierra Taylor with 15 points. You want to get an idea of how many schools are scouting here? I'll run through the list and see where you lose track. Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, Michigan, Michigan State, Purdue. In fact, the only Big Ten schools that aren't looking at her right now are Northwestern and Ohio State. So that also includes Penn State, Iowa, and then Maryland ranks third in the nation in the powerhouse ACC and Marquette. So everybody and their dog is looking at Taylor right now. However, she would look good in a Golden Bears uniform. <laughs> I think she'll take a Division I scholarship if she's offered it. Jeske draws a foul. And the basket. Will not count. PA announced who thought it did, but the ref said no. Kiara Buford is called for her third personal foul. Geske goes to the line, makes her first. Central's out of fouls to give, by the way. Geske is not only skilled in the sport of basketball, last spring she participated in the state tennis tournament in singles where she lost to the eventual state champion, so Geske has some versatility. But the second one rims out, and Taylor races in for the rebound. Jones inside, but she draws a foul almost as soon as she gets the ball. Actually, it goes to Central. It's on Jones, that's her fourth. One more and she's out and Willie Taylor knows it. He sends in Dorsey, but she has to be careful sitting with three. Uh, she, he backs off that press and, and comes back to a half court press. I mean, half court set up here. That's a good move by Taylor. Here's where the Raiders can make a move. Johnson there to strip the pass from Geske. Mike, to tell you the truth, I think the press is overrated. If you can play good half-court defense, I think you're better off. If the press leaves a great big back door open, and I'm always leery of it. Geske called for a third personal foul. They still have three fouls to give, though. Central has 19 fouls, so the next... So Creighton will shoot two free throws from here on out. Johnson for three. 
no good. Rebound to Dorsey, she had to leap over somebody. Megan Howard, no. Three scoring chances, they couldn't convert, but Taylor strips the ball away. Sure athleticism there. She just keeps getting better and better. Absolutely. Look at that crossover. And now, she finds a way to get to the basket, but can't get the shot to fall, and a foul is called. It's on Creighton. It will send Kiara Buford to the line. The foul is on Mary Kenny, her first personal. Right now, Central, with their big man in foul trouble, needs to give the the opponent some heavy doses. Better get open and, uh, and shoot that beautiful stroke that she has. View for two of two. Central has a 21 point cushion with just over nine to go. Buford with 17 points. And now Creighton. The pressure is starting to slowly build. Geske wanted to go inside, but will go to Dean Hart. See, Central's actually applying more pressure now in the half-court set than what they were when they were doing full court. You see, because the opponent has no place to go, you know, to get away from them. Now they have to deal with them. Central forces a five-second violation, and they are looking to put this one away. Heavy dosage of Buford right now. Heavy dosage. There'll be a lot of eyes watching her as she's gonna put on the maroon and gold. Next year, Howard inside, goes for the shot, but will go to the free throw line. That's more difficult than more than There's great athleticism on all ends of the court for Central. Absolutely. But Buford found the post like that, just as calm. Found the low post entry and, you know, Howard's gonna put that in. Or maybe not. Sorry, Megan. <laughs> The foul is on Mary Kenny, her second personal. Central looks like they have the capabilities of returning to their form where they went 32-0 last year. They won't be undefeated this season, but they could be very well win another state title. She has 11 points, by the way. Central up by 22. Siona West steps in with the steal. Buford almost stepped out of bounds. Kept control. And Dorsey almost rimmed out, but she gets the basket. She nice now, drop step by Dorsey. She now has six. Dean Hart for three. Short. And the rebound will go to Johnson. Central will stay, will keep the ball. Substitutions coming in. Kendra Harris and Sarah Hendricks for Creighton. Deara Taylor back in for Central. Central up 58 to 34. Now, do you want to get an idea of how much Central has dominated in this half? They have scored 21 points. Creighton only four. Fouls starting to pile up for the Raiders. In fact, they are out of fouls to give. Kendra Harris with their third personal foul. Uh, Central will go to the free throw line from here on out. Taylor with the right-handed layup on the other side. Nice smooth play. A one-handed move. What a razzle-dazzle performance for Thierra Taylor. She has 17 points. What are you doing? You got that going on, huh? And she's only a junior. Hendricks to Dean Hart for three again. Short again. Kenny with the rebound, and she finally chalks a basket on the scoring chart. I like what Central's doing. They're taking their time, methodically putting Creighton Durham Hall away. Buford there. with the pick. With the long range three, almost went in. Harris with the rebound. Central not going to let Creighton claw their way back like they did last year. 
Dean Hart to Jeske. The pass was a little off target. Creighton will keep possession. And they're still raising all kinds of cane on the board without their big person in right now. And, uh, you know, it, Central's finding a way to win. That's, that's exactly what you have to do. Harris with the finger roll. With the finger roll. She now has seven points. But Creighton looking at a 22-point deficit. Central, they're in no hurry. No, they're not. They're just going to wind out the clock. Johnson finds Howard, works her way to the basket, too strong. Harris with the rebound. And here comes Creighton Durham Hall, just keep for three. No. Buford with the rebound. Taylor is open on the other end, spins around. But the shot bounces out. Megan Howard gets an offensive rebound, draws a foul. Yeah, no, but the thing is, a pass like that that Buford made to Taylor, that, that's a pass that's supposed to go out of bounds. Taylor catches the ball, gathers it, and still gets her feet underneath to get, a, get off a real good shot. The foul is on Sarah Hendricks, her second personal. Howard has seen a lot of trips to the free throw line tonight. It's her second miss. One of two. You can breathe a little easier now. Thank you. Howard has 12 points. I wonder where Megan Howard's going to school next year. Well, she had wanted to go to Minnesota. Hendricks in and out. But she gets her own rebound. Puts up a shot. That still doesn't fall. She'd be a nice golden bear also. She is looking at a few Division II schools. She may not go to Minnesota next year on an athletic scholarship, though, with their freshman recruiting class already announced. She needs to be a golden bear. <laughs> Concordia having a pretty good program of their own. Winning the national championship in volleyball, I might add. That's right. The Division II women's volleyball champions, and they have to be feeling pretty good about that. Go Bears. <laughs> Kiara Buford goes back to the line. Hendricks called for her third personal foul. Central has just been running on all cylinders tonight. Oh. Isn't that thing a thing of beauty, that shot of hers? Nothing but bottom. And she does it again. She has 19 points. She's just gifted. Lots of work in that. that. That's just time. It's over and over and over and over and over again. Anybody that, you young people watching this game tonight, that's exactly what you need to do. Just watch uh, Kiara Buford and the way she shoots. You can tell she works at it. And this has to leave Central's returning players feeling confident, knowing that they can put up these big leads like they did a year ago, even with uh, out the likes of Angel Robinson and Emily Black, because and, uh, over the... Next six days, they have four games, beginning with this one, and then they have to go play Becker, the Class 3A champions from last year. Then they also have to go and face Minnetonka. So Central has a tough schedule. In fact, Willie Taylor told me a couple days ago that when winter break comes for these kids, he's going to do something he usually doesn't do, and that's give the team the entire break off because they've been playing so many games in December. And not to mention they've played a lot of games this summer, too. You know, they, they need a break. That's a good idea. Get them, get them wanting to come back to the gym. Sometimes you get them too much basketball, they get burned out. But after their rest, Central will be playing Long Beach Poly at Target Center. So they will have a lot of tough non-conference matchups. You make a run like you did a year ago, pretty soon everybody wants to play you. Absolutely. But this team seems to be, I talked to Coach Taylor earlier this summer, and he anticipated at least two or three ball, ball games, which he thought he might lose. I mean, you know, he felt that the, the, the losing is just going to make us better, make them better, because they're going to learn from their mistakes. You know, that, that'll be the best teacher. Now, do those losses include the ones uh, when Humble comes to play Central? <laughs> <laughs> we won't talk about the three sisters. <laughs> 
Humboldt is on a rebound, though. They Last year, with two of their Hicks sisters, one of them didn't come in yet. Uh, they had their first winning season in a while. In fact, they were the only other team in the St. Paul Conference to have a winning record overall. Now they have the diaper dandy, that, that younger uh, Hicks sister. She is some kind of player. Um, the state's going to find out who she is, and they're going to like watching what they see. Creighton taking their time. Molly King drives inside, gets the bounce. You know, Creighton knows that this game is probably in the bag, but they're working on their half court sets. They're getting ready for the conference play. You know, when you play in the Woodberries and the Cottage Groves of the world, you know, you have to have good solid defense and good solid offense. Creighton playing in the tough Suburban East Conference. And Central, they're just going to take their time. They don't need to do anything crazy now. Georgie Jones, she has not gotten a lot of shots to fall tonight. A chase for the ball, and everyone's falling on it. Jump ball, Central will take possession. Now here's St. Paul Central showing why they're state champions. You know, they are diving on the floor, getting after it. I mean, that's, that's exactly what you have to do. You gotta like it when everybody goes down on the floor just to get that round mound of sound. Siona West had her pass broken up. Central will keep possession with 3.38 to go though. I think it's safe to say Central has got this one in the bag. But they're still going after it. Trying to be as business as usual. I mean, finding the extra pass. And Taylor with the crossover move. Another razzle-dazzle highlight. She has 19 points. Nice entry pass to Taylor. Harris on the other end uses the glass to sink it. See what I mean? Creighton hasn't stopped executing. I mean, they know this thing's in the bag, but they're working at it, trying to get some things better. That's what the non-conference is all about. Taylor tried again, and Megan Howard did just about everything she could, but her enemy there was the out-of-bounds line. You know, Mike, the last I heard, the championships aren't played in December, so you get ready and get, get, get ready for that conference play. Way too early to decide a state champion right now. Absolutely. You've got Centennial. They should be, they'll be a favorite going in now after beating Big Red. And Minneapolis South looking strong as well. Destroyed St. Paul Johnson in their season opener. And you know they want to get at Central. Don't forget Hopkins. Hop Johnson with the steal. She was going to take it herself. And she'll draw the foul. Which means a trip to the free throw line. The foul is on Carolyn Deanhardt, her second personal, but by now that statistic is pretty much moot. <laughs> Willie Taylor said about Kiana Johnson that she is going to get better with every game, and even tonight, there's quite an improvement over the Centennial game. Took more time to set up plays and was not in a hurry to get a shot off. And that's what the point guard's all about. with 2.28 to go. I think for Johnson, I think what would help her case is that she's trying not to emulate Angel Robinson, but to uh, make the point guard a position of her own. Absolutely. And a player is down. It's Taylor. But she appears to be okay. A little bit of a scare, though. Oh, no, no, no. T Taylor's all day tough. She loves to play basketball. Well, if I were, if I had won 35 out of my last 36, soon to be 36 of 37 off a state championship, I'd be, I feel I'd be pretty happy playing basketball myself. Oh, absolutely. Buford. Look at that pass. Finds Dorsey, and she capitalizes. That's what wins championships. Extra passes. 
Central may not be scoring 80, 90 points like they did in non-conference games a year ago, but they're still getting the job done. Nice high-low by Creighton. And Molly King with a jump shot. She has four. Creighton Durham Hall getting a few more in there, looking to build some confidence as they play a pretty tough schedule. And actually, on the same day that Central goes to play Long Beach Poly, they have a matchup with Class 4A third place finishers, Edina. Taylor stops, drives, can't get the bounce. Georgie Jones cleans up the mess. Jones finally gets one to fall. Central up 69-44. And they will now have won 36 out of their last 37 games. Harris from the baseline, no good. Taylor drives the ball. Here comes Buford, she's gonna try to get one more. No, she'll do a no-look pass to Jones, and Jones knows what to do. Buford with the razzle-dazzle pass. Chesky on the other end, and one. Yep, that's a, that's a good sign for Creighton. Just keep coming. Uh, Buford again with a nice entry pass to the post. Central has matched their season-high point total at 71. That's good senior leadership there to you know, finish this game out. She has to worry about her points or anything like that. Find the open person, make the easy basket, finish the game. Taylor sending in his subs. Jeske completes the three-point play. Gives Creighton something to look forward to. She led the way with 18 points. Not a bad night. She was averaging 21 a game going into it. But uh, Creighton will see how well they can rebound later on in the season. Buford, she's going to look for one more. Swish. But now she has 21 points. Jeske goes inside. She has 20. So, Jeske with a great individual performance, but it was a team effort that brings St. Paul Central up to three and one. Their 36th win out of their last 37 games as they go in with a 73 to 49 win. You couldn't ask for much more from the St. Paul Central Minutemen, especially in the second half. No, I mean, Central methodically put them away. Uh, they took their time, played good, solid half-court offense and defense to finish this game. I'm very impressed with the way they played basketball this evening. Used a big run in the second half to keep Creighton from making any comebacks. As far as the player of the game, that'd be a tough one between Thierra Taylor and Kiara Buford, both of them showing off some great moves tonight. Well, I, I tell you what, the, the player of the game is the St. Paul Central team. This was a total team effort. There was f real fine distribution of the ball. I mean, you have even scoring. These are the kinds of things that brings on championships. Everything even, you, you, that scares the opponent. Who, who do we, you can't load up and defend one person. That will do it from here. The final score, St. Paul Central 73, Creighton Durham Hall 49. Central moves to three and one on the season. For Roderick Bell and everyone else here at Keystone Productions, this is Mike Peden. So long, everybody.